Our Sunday School lesson for April the 24th, 2016, Lesson 8. We're still coming out of Unit 2, which is entitled Restoration Faith. Our lesson title for this week is Back Home Again. Our devotional reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. And our background scripture is from the 15th chapter of Luke, verses 11 through 32. And our printed text is also from the 15th chapter of Luke, verses 11 through 24. And our key verse, This my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Luke fifteen twenty four. Our lesson aim as a result of studying this lesson that the students should be able to retell the story of the father and two sons, focusing on the younger son who became profligate and returned home. Also feel the need for reunion and forgiveness in families and to connect that to their relationship with God. And finally commit to helping the broken families be restored by praying for them and giving any other assistance possible. Back home again. We find in verses 1 through 3 of this 15th chapter of Luke states, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eat with them. And he, speaking of Jesus, spoke this parable, saying unto them. Here we have in this 15th chapter of Luke, where the Lord Jesus uses three parables to speak of the love of God for the lost. We see the love that seeks and the love which is one that receives. In the first two parables, we see the shepherd who rejoices when he, when the sheep that is lost is found. And then we see the woman who rejoices when the coin that was missing is in her hand. And now we have the parable of the prodigal son, the scope of which is the same as the first two, which is to show how pleasing to God the conversion of sinners, great sinners is, and how ready he is to receive and to embrace them upon their repentance. Now we have to understand that the first two parables represents Christ seeking the lost. For Luke 19 and 10 says that the Son of Man comes to, to seek and save that which is lost. So in our lesson today, we have the sinner who is seeking to return to the Father's house. And that, and, and that all three shows the rejoicing over a repentant soul. Now, we have to understand in, in our lesson that, that there were these publicans and the so-called sinners that was there, and that Jesus readily received them, okay? And so, now Jesus uses in verse 11, where he begins to teach them, he says that, and a certain man had two sons. Okay, now, in this God is represented as the certain man. God is represented as a father with two sons. 
And understand this, that Jesus is using that the younger son as being the, the publican and the older son as being the scribes and the Pharisees, those self-righteous religious folks. Okay, and, and so Jesus is telling this story, showing them just how cold-hearted that they hearts were, but he used it, the parable about seeking something that is lost and rejoicing over the ones that it is when it is found. Verse 12 says that in, in verse 11 and 12 we read, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he, the father, divided his living unto them. Give me the portions of the goods that fall to me. Now, just listen to just how rude and, and, and unthankful that this young son was. The son might have said, Sir, if you please, give me. But here he makes a demand. Give me the portion of the goods that fall to me. Not so much as you think fit to allot me or give me, but that which is my due, what you owe me for an inheritance. The Jewish law for inheritance uh, allotted one half as much to the younger son as to the older son. That is, that the younger son was to get one-third of the estate, if it was only two sons, at the death of the father. See, but the father here, he did not have to advocate or give away or divide his estate at his present time because this was done for, for after the father died, but this ungrateful son, he wanted what he felt that was owed him or that was coming to him right now. And so, and, and so the father gave it to him. And so in this case, it seems that with the younger son that he received only money, that, that is uh, money or movable property, something that he can sell and get a cash value out of it and the older son he chose to remain with his father and dwell on the parental estate the land and the fixed properties remained in their possession him and the father still stayed there he did not leave so we find in verses 13 and 14 of our lesson where it states and not many days afterwards, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty phantom in the land, and he began to be in want. Not many days afterwards. Here the younger son, he collected his property as soon as he could get everything lined up and, and arrangements had been made. And he did what? He left his father's house and traveled to a far country, far from his father's house. Now, we have to understand that so many of us when we're young and and, and, and and impetuous that how that we're just eager, we just can't wait. We just can't wait to get grown, to get away from the the restraints, the, the, the control of our loving parent. I can't wait till I get grown, get away from here, get my own place. I could do what I want to do. Can't nobody tell me what I want to do. I could do when, how, and I could do whatever I want. And I'll be, and I just can't wait to get away. And so here, this this was this young man's attitude, this, this young son attitude. He tried to get away from his father as far as he can. 
Now we understand that the that the condition of the prodigal in this venture of, of his represents not only just him, but the miserable state into which man's fall when we turn from God. We fall into a sinful state. We fall into a state where we are a state of departure and distance from God. The Bible tells us that in Isaiah 53 and 6, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Now, just look at the state that this young man was in. That he got away from God as far as his father, as far as he could. As a matter of fact, he, he, he didn't only move on, on the other side of the city or next door, but, but he moved to another country to get away as far as, as he could. Okay, and then once he got there with all the things that he possessed, understand it, that he did not earn, not one penny of what he had, but it was his father's wealth that the father gave to him, that, his, that the father had created the wealth and gave it to him. Look at mankind today. Mankind today, we do not bring anything to the table whatsoever. Everything that we have, every good and perfect gift comes from above from God. If we have any type of intelligence, God made our brain. If we have any type of physical strength, beauty, or whatsoever, God gave that to us. If we have any talent whatsoever, anything, everything that we have that is of any value, we did not create or earn ourselves. It is a gift of God. But but we we'll take that and run away with it. Not to be used for God's glory, but but we'll take it and use it for our own self gratification and saying that we're gonna go and do what we want to do. And so it says that he went into this far away land and that he spent all. A sinful state is 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 a state of spinning. He wasted his substance with riders living. We have wasted the precious time that God has given us. Many, many of us in our youth where well, our youth could have been used in the in, in the prime of our strength could have been used for God's service, but but we wasted it. We wasted it out there doing the things and, and uh, that was uh, enticed to, to us by the devil. We have wasted talent that God had gave us that could have been used for his glory, but no, we, we, we wasted it. Did not use it where that he would, would get the glory out of the things that he, he gave us. So we find that this this young man spent all that he had. Why would uh, ride this living? Many today have physical ailments from what ride this living, where where what where they spent the 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 strength uh, 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 of their bodies, and and it's been wasted through and, and ravaged through alcohol and and drugs and and all types of uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, but it has spent, it's been wasted in righteous living. We also seen that he said that uh, uh, after he spent all and he began to be in want. A sinful state is a wanting state. When all has been spent, all the, after he done spent all his money, on the harlots and his companions, all the friends, so-called friends, left him. They say that nobody wants you when you're down and out. When the, when you got plenty of uh, money and things to be used of, that, that you have more friends that you can shake a stick at. But now that all that was gone, he found himself wanting. And that even in the midst 
of that want and that lack, there arose a mighty phantom in the land. Everything was scarce. You know, there is always, there is always, when one is always far from God, they find things are scarce. There is nothing that can satisfy man's soul but God. And so he found that, that he he was wanting, he was lacking, that that there was scarcity of uh, not only nourishment for the body, but that there was a scarceness of peace for his soul. We find in verses 15 and 16 where it states, And when he had joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swines, and he would faint, have filled his belly with the husks of the swines, did eat, and no man gave unto him. He joined himself to a citizen of that country. The same wicked life that before was represented by riotous living is here represented by a life as a servant, a slave. Now, we have to understand that the devil here is represented as the citizen of that country. Sinners join themselves to him. They hide themselves into his service to do his work, to be at his beck and call and, and to depend upon him and to obey him. Romans 6 and 16 says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants ye are whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. This man had left home, left home and found now he, he didn't found himself hired out as a slave, as a servant in the foreign country. As a, in the foreign country where, where he came there a prosperous young man, but now everything that he had is gone. It's gone, his friends gone, his money gone, and now now he finds himself destitute. And so now he got to hire himself out as what? As a servant. Proud young man. Established the young man back at home. His, his family, he come from a, a family of wealth, but now he is a servant. But now he done hide himself out to, to somebody who don't care anything about him, but just only, only want to use and abuse him. And so now, since he's this man's servant, now he got to obey what he tells him to do. So what? What the citizen does, he sends him into the field. Not to feed sheep, but to feed swines. The lowest possible occupation for a Jew is to feed swines. It was forbidden to the Jews to eat swines and, and unlawful for them to keep them. Here now, in this very parable, the Lord is using the Lord is using this picture to show the loathsome and low down employment and the deep degradation to which sin leads people. Sin I have you to do some of the lowest and loathsome things that the the most degrading things possible. This was very degrading to this young man. Just like sin has us, it brings us to a point where we are so 
degraded by the state that we find ourselves in that 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 you hide from people that you know. You might see them coming in and you turn the corner and go the other way because you don't want them to see you in that state. But 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 this is what the state that we are brought to when 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 we are hired out as servants and slaves to the devil to to seeing that that we got to obey him and and, and it is a, a state that will cause as many people to commit suicide because they they so ashamed of from whence they then came to where they are but as our story go forth we'll see that how did God, grace, and mercy still prevail? And so we see it says that it says when he would faint and have filled his belly with the husk that the swines did eat, and no man gave unto him. This young man, master in his foreign country, it, he was bound to provide for his wants for his needs but the but the for provision which he made for him was so poor that he would have preferred the food of the pigs the swines he desired a portion of their food but that was not given him for a certain uh, a quality was measured out for the pigs but he could not eat them of himself. The citizens thought more of those swines than they did of him. So many situations where we see that young people, young people, old people, where where uh, uh, middle aged people, where we they're caught in situations where where they have attached themselves to 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 people in situations where 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 they are less than animals in the sight of the ones that they are dependent on, where people just treat them just to the lowest, with the lowest respect and, and disrespect that, that can be imagined. And so here this man, he was brought to an estate, a statue in life where that the pigs was allowed it more to eat than than he was, that 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 the so-called master cared more about these degrading animals than he did him. We find in verse 17 of our lesson, and it says where, and when he came to himself, he said, how many high servants my father had bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. And when he came to himself, this is a very expressive face, expressive face, when he came to himself. It is commonly applied to one who has been deranged or out of their mind. And when he recovers, we say he has come to himself, or he didn't snap back. Here it denotes that the folly of the young son was a kind of derangement, that 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 he was insane, that he had lost his mind, that 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 you know he had to be crazy to do what he did. And so it is with every sinner. Madness, madness, insanity is in the heart of sinners. They are estranged from God. They separate themselves from God and are led by the influence of what? Evil passions, contrary to the better judgment and decision of the of a sound mind. But this young man finally 
his eyes was open and he realized his state. He said, man, I must be crazy. Now look at me. He's finally seen himself as 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 he really was in reality. He said, I got to be out of my mind to be doing what I'm doing. Many of us, I don't know about you, but I know I had to, I have at times I, I said, man, you know, I I had to I had to be crazy to 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 do that to to even think that way to even fall into that trap that Satan and sin led me in. But see, but 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 God is the one. God is the one that keeps us and lead us and and, and deliver us and bring us to 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 our right mind. And so He said that. That, you know, when his eyes were open, he realized what state that he was in. And a lot of us, we we refuse to acknowledge and realize what state that we in. All we all we pretend that 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 all is well, that everything is fine, and that it and that there is nothing wrong. But Lord knows, you know, we all need. Him, we 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 all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then, if it had not been, or or, or for the mercies and the long suffering of God, that all of us should have perished a long time ago. And so he said to himself, he came to himself. He said, "Now, how many high servants of my father's house have bread to spare?" And here I am, here I am. I pray for hunger. In other words, he said, "I'm the biggest fool in the world. I'm sitting. I'm. I done left my father's house, and, and because of my foolishness, and then my stupid pride, the to go and and go back. I'm about to starve to death." And so he came to himself. And the Bible so it said he said that look that I will verse eighteen and nineteen said he said in his mind that I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and are no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hide servants. I will arise and go to my father's house. Here we see the act of true repentance. Repentance is a change of mind towards God and sin. True repentance. A change of mind of attitude towards God and towards sin. See, he said for Look, he said, I have sinned against heaven. Heaven here is spoken of, is spoken of God. And then evidence of true repentance is the feeling that our sins have been committed chiefly against God. You know, commonly we think most of our sins are committed against one another, but when we see that our sins, the true character of, of our sins, our sins, we see that they have been committed chiefly against God. Even David, even David wrote after committing the crimes of murder and adultery, yet he felt that those sins was not committed against mankind and Uriah, but chiefly they was committed against God. For we find him him writing in Psalm 51 and 4 where he says, Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. And that I am no more worthy, the son said, that I am no more worthy to be called thy son. 
make me as one of thy high servants. Re realizing that really your sinful state and that we are not worthy to be called thy son. And so Jesus was using this to show the self-righteous scribes and, and Pharisees that though they thought so highly of themselves and that and, and, and how that how could Jesus call himself a prophet and then receive these so-called publicans and sinners a publican was uh, was a, uh, a a traitor a publican was a traitor that he collected the taxes from the Jewish people from from the uh, uh, Romans and the sinner was they was considered them as as some of uh, 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 the lesser, the low class people, even some of the Gentiles that was among them, and that they was less than less than dogs. But Jesus here is using an example, showing how that God rejoices over the repentance of one that 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 returns to Him, and so we see in, in verse verses uh, twenty one. 20 and 21 it states and he arose and came to his father but when he was a great way off his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son said unto him father I have sinned against heaven and, and thee and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. What a merciful God that we have, that God who is rich in mercy, with his great love with which he loved us. We ought to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For why? Because his mercy endureth forever. But even in the midst of his son, confession his the father did not say well i told you so well you know you de you got what you deserve but the father said what then his son even doing his confession the father said to his servant bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and found, and that he be and they began to be merry. That heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents, and that and that we that we as 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 the children of God, we should rejoice when 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 a brother or a sister returns back into the floor. We should rejoice when 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 mankind repents of his sins and, and understands and see that he has sinned against God and that he needs a a savior and that the Lord that the Father has provided a savior for him in. Christ Jesus and that and that when they accept Jesus Christ and become part of the family of God that that they was dead in trespasses and sin but but God who is rich in mercy has made them alive through Christ Jesus we should be rejoiced we should rejoice and make merry and that be glad that they have came back home again this is a beautiful story. We should not turn up our nose and think that we, any of us, is better than anyone else. Whether they be, I don't care if they be an a, 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 a alcoholic, a winehead, a crackhead, a thief, a murderer, or a prostitute. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God so loved the world. That he, that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever believe on him, the good and the bad, shall what? Shall not perish but have 
everlasting life. Salvation is is, is for all mankind, not not for just those who we think should have it and and pick and choose, but but we should welcome, we we should welcome our brothers and sisters and have compassion on them because what? Because God has mercy and compassion upon us. Why? Because all we like sheep have gone astray and every one of us to our own way, but God has laid on him, Jesus Christ. God has the iniquity of us all. And so we should be eager to welcome back home those who strayed away. May God bless you and keep you.